supposed to be doing that? What are you doing? Lenny. I'm gonna have to wash my sheets. He's unbothered. Look at unbothered. Lenny. Alright. You can stay. <laughs> Yeah, you're in trouble. You're not supposed to be doing that. Oh gosh, I'm gonna wash everything. Okay, got. Oh gosh, <clears throat> not talked in a while. I got ready, and I'm actually about to go drop Lenny off at my parents' house. I'm gonna pick up my mom, and we're going to ride over to the next town over to go to our favorite little used bookshop. So this is gonna turn into like a little come book shopping with me video. I feel like I'm not looking my best right now. But let me show you the used book shopping fit, okay? Okay, this is gonna have to work. <laughs> okay, here we have the House of Leaves sweatshirt action going on, okay? And then some leggings. That was the outfit of the day. Earring check. So cute. Oh, the little black hoop, adorable. All right, we've arrived. We're about to go in. <laughs> to the used bookstore. I went back, dropped my mom back off at uh, my parents' house. Then I went over to the store because I decided I was going to make some burrito bowls for dinner, like some uh, chicken in a crock pot deal. And I'm gonna invite my parents to come over and eat with me tonight. So that should be fun later on. I'll, sh I'll show you what I make. Let me show you what I got at the bookstore because I found some gems today. Sorry for shaking you up a little bit. Um, Let's see here. First, I got these two gritty looking feminist thrillers by Natsuo Carino. One is called Real World. This other one here is called Grotesque. Oh my gosh, on the back of one of these books, here's what sold me on, on both of these. On the back of Real World, someone said, reads like little women in an acid bath. What does that even mean? I'm so intrigued. I have been loving fiction and like especially thrillers or horror translated from Japanese to English recently. I don't know if it's because um, like the translated, first of all, that's also like a very broad generalization. I've only read like maybe five in the past year or so, but every single one I've really loved. And I recently heard Emma from uh, Drinking By My Shelf say that same thing and I had already been thinking it. So when I saw these in the bookstore today, I was like, you go out on a limb, girl, go ahead and get them. Um, each of these were $3.95. So like they're in perfect condition. Like I don't think that these spines have even been cracked at all and they're, you know, like normal size, pretty paperback books. Um, yeah, very interested in them. Next is the steal probably for the whole day. I found a mint condition version of the Child Finder for $2.95. When I'm opening the book right there, I'm like showing you the price tag. I, that's what I'm doing. Um, this has pretty deckled edges, beautiful cover. The only thing I know about this is that I think it is a detective story. Okay, yeah, so a little while back, a girl went missing. So the family turns to a private investigator named Naomi, who has an uncanny talent for locating the lost and missing, known to the police and a select group of parents as the child finder. This woman is going to be this family's last hope. Sounds pretty good. Um, it looks like it's going to be a little wintry read, so I don't know if I'm going to be getting to this anytime soon, but I could not pass this deal up, especially because this is a book that has been on my radar for a little while now. Okay, this one I've never heard of. But I'm so intrigued. It's called Fellside by M.R. Carey, and it's about like a haunted prison, like this woman or not that woman, but some person. Let me see. Yeah, so it's about this woman in this maximum security prison, and then and the walls start talking to her or something. I know it looks super long. Let me just do a quick page 
count check here. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, nearly 500 pages. Um, I don't know. It actually sounds so good. I just want to start it tonight, even though Romance a thon has just begun and I really need to be like getting a head start on finishing some of those prompts. I'm on a little bit of a romance burn out right now because I've read two quite recently. I want to get into this haunted prison book. Okay, so Baby Teeth is the perfect example of something I want to buy at a used bookstore. This is a book that sounds like it's going to be really good to me. It's about this like demon type child. I don't know if she's literally a demon, but just like a mom having trouble with just a horrible child. Um, but this has quite terrible reviews, even though it sounds like something I would really like. So I have this beautiful hardback book that I found for $3.95. I really like the cover. I really like the way the spine looks. I'm, I've been into like the plain spines recently, like the pretty cream and black with a little red accent. That looks so professional to me. Um, and then we got the crush sucker on the front. So I don't know if I'm gonna like get to this anytime soon, but I'm glad that I found it at the thrift store. Like I couldn't leave without it, you know? Then I found Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Um, I have a few Lisa Jewell books. I've read a lot of Lisa Jewell, but I've not read this one. And I feel like this is arguably people's favorite. Am I saying that right? I think that people really like Then She Was Gone. It's definitely one of the more popular books that I've seen her write. Why did I say it like that? I don't remember the total exactly. I think I spent around $24 and that's for six books that look brand new pretty much to me. Um, and most of them are books that I already wanted to get anyway, or when I saw them, they sound so good. So yeah, that's what I got at the used bookstore. Um, while I have you here, let's just turn this into a little mini haul because I just did my summer book haul. I don't plan on doing another one for a while. And I wanna show you a few new books that I got. All right, this is just a super informal little mini haul. I had to change the angle there so I could sit up. Um, my two book of the month choices for May, no, June came in uh, like last weekend. So I got The Other Black Girl and The Maidens. I put both of these on my summer TBR. And then I found out they were both book of the month choices this month. So um, I now have these in my possession. Both of these are thriller books. I also got, <laughs> I went back to Target. Uh, you know, I just can't control myself in Target. I got Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed because I've been wanting to read this for so long and I feel like this was in hardback for so long that I thought it was a pretty long book, but actually it is just like 299 pages, barely 300 pages. Uh, I have a reading vlog idea for this um, and I don't know if I want to do it or not so I've kind of been putting off starting it because I don't know if I just want to sit down and read it, if I want to film my experience. Um, yeah, I don't know. I also got Dead Dead Girls. I put this on my Goodreads TBR so long ago when I first found out that this was going to be published in 2021. I'm sorry about that. I just saw a football fly across my window and I no one ever plays football out here. But yeah, Dead Dead Girls, it says here a Harlem Renaissance mystery. So that kind of makes me think this is going to be a little mystery series. I hope I'm not saying this wrong, but it sounds like it's gonna have LGBTQ plus rep. Let me see here. Um, so it's set in Harlem in 1926, and it's about this woman named Louise Lloyd. Louise is a black woman, and young black women like Louise are going missing in Harlem right now. And actually, Louise had been kidnapped back when she was a teenager, um, and somehow that's gonna connect to the present, I'm assuming. But listen to this sentence. Um, so that she hangs out in speakeasies and stuff like that. But it says, uh, Louise's friends, especially her girlfriend, Rosa Maria, Ro yeah, Rosa Maria Moreno might say she's running from her past and the notoriety that still stalks her, but don't tell her that. Sounds witty, that sounds sassy. I don't know, I am obsessed with the cover. Like that green leaf with the gold, that was my entire aesthetic of my first, one of my first apartments that I had. Um, so this is just my entire vibe right here. Just three more because I am like filming a romance, like what it was, summer, my, you just saw my brain glitch in real time. I'm filming a summer romance reading recommendations video probably tomorrow. So I've been reading these books and y'all, they are so good. So I have Play in the Palace by Paul Rudnick. This is a male-male romance and it is own voices to my understanding. People have been calling this a red, white, and royal blue ripoff. I'm probably gonna finish this book up tonight and all I have to say about that is that I love red, white, and royal blue with all my heart. 
and I also love this book. They, they are two different things. Um, also, I have Sorry Not Sorry because we have a woman chilling in a little margarita glass here on the front. This is about a woman who has been playing by the rules and all of a sudden decides she don't want to play by the rules anymore. She wants to be a bad girl. So this is a super fun summary book. And also, she's faking it. This has been a dark horse because I was not expecting to like this as much as I am. I, I think I, did I tell y'all I've already like been reading all of these books? Okay, anyway, this is about a woman who is a college dropout and a few years after she dropped out of college, she's still working at this um, Grubhub, like whatever the fictional equivalent in this world is to Grubhub. She's a delivery driver and then she turns to a career in social media in a really interesting way and it's all about like does that actually make her happy? And then we've got like a fun romance going on in here too. Is that everything? I don't know why I felt like I had more books to share with you guys than that. Let me do a little peek. Oh shoot. Wait, no, I did show you guys that. I did. All right, that was the little haul. Um, so plans for the rest of the evening. I need to finish my puzzle because like I said, my parents are coming and I don't want the puzzle to be sitting out on the uh, island there where we're gonna have to build our burrito bowls. So I'm gonna try to either put on an audiobook or watch a movie while I finish my little puzzle. Um, and then I might read a little bit. I might put on a little ASMR room maybe of a island cafe i've not found one of the i don't have one in mind but that just sounds really good um it is such a beautiful day today and i did not think it was going to be um so i might open my windows i'll i'll give you the vibes once i get them set up actually i don't even need an asmr room because uh the vibes very quickly turned into a thunderstorm let me show you my other window as well look at this my tree, my poor little tree is bending over. You can't take it anymore. Look at this. Can you see how it's coming down in sheets? This is not what I was expecting. It is the nighttime now. My parents came over for dinner. We had a lot of fun. We watched a little bit of YouTube actually before they left. We love watching Good Mythical Morning together. I feel like that's a very safe YouTube channel that like I'm always gonna enjoy anything Rhett and Link do. My dad is gonna enjoy it because they're actually from a town in North Carolina very close to where he grew up. And uh, my mom just likes them because she thinks they're funny and um, we all think they're funny. For some reason, I feel like I got the sun Sunday scaries out of nowhere which is really weird because it's Saturday night right now um, I feel really anxious and one thing that I like to do when I'm feeling anxious I like to have a little glass of Chardonnay and I like to get out my guitar um, I've, I've not learned anything new in quite a while so I think I'm gonna play around with an oldie but a goodie um, Blackbird by the Beatles it's not like the way I play it is not like the traditional way like if you looked it up on uh, ultimate guitar These aren't the correct tabs, but um, I just kind of made my own tabs when I was in high school from like what sounded right And it's how I've played it ever since so like I'm gonna give you a little blackbird action. Let me set this down Let me have a practice round. It's been a minute Okay, I think I can do it enough that is quite enough of the guitar for tonight i actually have a little mini amplifier i can't remember if i've shown you guys or not um it's at my parents house right now because i do live in an apartment complex and that thing can get out of control real fast and especially i've had some wine it's hard for me to tell how loud it gets um i'm not an annoying neighbor i just get paranoid that i'm being too loud if i can't tell how loud it is but maybe in the next vlog i'll break out the amp um i also 
I got a Dobro recently. Um, so once I hone those skills a little bit, I'm sure I'll share with you guys. I wish I could give you a reading update. Um, earlier when I said I was gonna work on my puzzle and listen to an audiobook or watch a movie, actually that didn't work at all because I decided that the movie I wanted to watch was Confessions, which is the same Confessions by Kane Minato. So let me tell you just a very quick story and then I'm gonna hop off of here. Um, back when Savannah from Riveting Reads and Sarah from Sarah Shelves and like when everyone was reading Confessions by Kane Minato, we all wanted to watch the movie really badly and the movie is on Netflix, not Netflix, the movie is on YouTube and it even was at that time. But the thing was, it did not have English subtitles available and it's a Japanese movie. So I didn't watch it, none of us watched it recently. Savannah texted me and was like, girl, I found it with subtitles on YouTube and everything. So earlier I had my puzzle all set up and everything. Went to watch the movie and realized, oh my gosh, you dummy. You have to read the subtitles because you can't speak Japanese. Um, so the puzzle wasn't working out. I ended up just like putting all of the stray pieces in a little baggie and I still have the framework of the puzzle laid out on the counter. I'm not gonna show you guys because I don't know if you care or not, but um, I, I was just gonna destroy the entire puzzle, but I didn't do that. Long story short, I watched um, almost all of the Confessions movie. I still have about 20 minutes left. I, I, I'm gonna finish it up after this. I feel like this adaptation is one of the most um, I don't want to say realistic it just it's very close to how the book was written I feel like a lot of the sentences because the book is written in like a lot of monologues that's very conducive to a movie script as well um, so of course I'm a fan I really like the movie I feel really weird saying this and I'm debating on whether or not to even cut all of this out um, so if you're seeing this obviously I decided to keep it in but I've been feeling a lot of pressure recently because my channel is very close to monetization which I just I never thought I would see the day I don't do lives on my channel because I um, I love being live on other people's channels and I never get nervous to be live on other people's channels but there is some type of anxiety in me that it, it like it holds me back from going live on my own channel and so I always had it in my mind that I would never be able to be monetized if I didn't have those viewing hours from the lives I don't know how if I'm making any sense right now but actually my channel is really close to monetization and so because of that I've been feeling anxious and like wanting to make content that I think that viewers will like and I feel like recently I've been kind of forgetting to make content for myself. So if you've stuck around this entire time, thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me because this is a video of just what I did on a Saturday and it's just you, it's just me, nothing fake, nothing, and like why am I getting so like dramatic right now? I don't mean that I'm ever being fake in my videos. I feel like I'm a very like what you see is what you get <laughs> kind of person. But I really, really like making these reading vlogs and yet every time I do, when I post it, I'll go back and watch a little bit and just start cringing like, why did you post this? And yet, I love to film them. I have so much vlog footage that has never seen the light of day just because I can never work it into a video and I'm scared people won't like it. I'm scared it's like not gonna hold people's attention. So I'm rambling again. My whole point is just thank you for watching this. Um, I love this community so much. This has been such a beautiful outlet for me. Um, not only a creative outlet, but I feel like really some of the best friends that I have in my life are on booktube and friends that I've made from this channel and from like other people in the community's channels. I'm really thankful for every interaction that I have on here and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm gonna cut things off now. I'm gonna try to like relax a little bit tonight. Like I said, no idea why I've got Sunday scaries right now. I'm already stressed about Monday's work day. Um, so I'm gonna try to have like a chill little Saturday evening, maybe sit on my porch a little bit finish this up, maybe watch another movie. So I hope that anyone who's watching this right now is having a really great night, a great day, a great morning, whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.